Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining me on my channel. My name is Emily Gear. I'm a multidimensional channel and a transformative energy healer. And so today I'm here to bring you um, the energy report for this new moon in Virgo, which is happening on August the 30th. So coming up today is the 27th. I usually start feeling that those lunar activities about three days prior. So um, so we are just entering into that space, that lunar space, I guess the opening of the portal, you might say. Um, but it takes place on the 30th. And I have not, I have been so busy and so like, honestly working on my own, uh, I don't know, the various things coming up for me, that I've not done any channeling about this yet. So, so this is all gonna be new to me, whatever comes out. Um, if you find that you're going through something or like to do a private reading or session with me, you can book that on my website, which is IamEmilyGear.com. Um, that's Akashic Records reading. That is um, uh, tarot. That is also any kind of energy healing. Really, I combine it all depending on what it is that you need. Um, however, if you go for just the 30-minute sessions, those are better as readings just because there's not a lot of time to get in depth of beliefs that need to be cleared and things like that. Um, okay, so I'm shuffling the cards as I'm speaking. I'm just going to ask Source for messages for the collective with regards to the new moon in Virgo coming up in a couple days. A whole huge chunk just fell and I'm not going to take the whole thing, but I am seeing this King of Cups or King of Hearts in this deck. Um, showing up right off the bat. So let's get a little more information about what that is. I'm feeling, um, I'm actually feeling a strong sense in my body that this is, this is something about showing our own physical bodies care, like self-care kind of. Um, at least that's what I'm getting at this moment. Let's see what other cards coming out. I almost feel it radiating through all of my cells. Like I feel like it's clearing my cells as we, as uh, as it moves through. And I feel this sense of like for me personally, I have been injured recently in martial arts. I have um, been dealing with some other medical issues that have come up. I've been dealing with like transitioning off medications, all kinds of things, and even like reevaluating diet and stuff like that, all kinds of things having to do with care of my my personal physical body. Um, and so that's how this is presenting to me today. It makes sense now that we've just entered Virgo that this might be a communal theme, like a, a collective theme. So let's just see what comes out. All right. Clarify this King of Hearts, please. Clarify this King of Hearts. Oh my God. <sighs> this is interesting. Um, so it came up with the sun, which does kind of give me the same feeling on the collective level about that sort of radiating love and um, joy energy coming through the body with the queen of hearts. So we have um, I'm tempted to go into a more, uh, a more, I guess, um, personal reading here of this, uh, of these cards, but first I'm going to stick around the perimeter and just say that, you know, this is a, a sense of compassion for our physical bodies that we have not maybe, um, been really attuned to. Um, and it might be coming out here with the nine of swords due to some, some issues that have come up. So it's like, you know, maybe you have just come in contact or will be coming in contact with some kind of uh, physical difficulty, something that kind of tips you off to the fact that something is amiss, all right? Um, and that it's going to require you to refocus yourself on the body. I want to apologize because I know that this microphone is probably picking up the fact that Louis Jr. is just pacing around the house. And so it's like toenails everywhere. Um, so I do feel like it's almost like, um, some attention that you have needed to give to yourself for a very long time. Now, this is coming up as cups energy. So I kind of do feel like there's this, there's this, um, 
I want to say mind body connection, but also heart body connection going on that needs your attention. That there is a critical piece that has maybe been not uh, addressed, which might have led to this sort of um, minor, I'm going to say it's a minor physical crisis, okay? It might be a mental crisis too. And that is really just, it's really queuing you up or teeing you up to be able to deal with the issue. And the issue is not going to be solved without addressing the need for self-compassion here. Okay. Um, Virgo season is amazing for reevaluating your habits and the things that you do habitually, the things you do every day or every week or, you know, your work habits or whatever. And so while many of those are healthy, there's definitely a there's definitely a point in the pendulum where we swing into the unhealthy. And so I think like I'm feeling like we need to look at what that is. And that might actually even um, sort of intersect with our mental health at this point. I'm feeling okay. I want. I just want to say this, you know, because off often I'm reading for divine compliments because I know that the majority of you who are listening are that. Um, that as you do this, as you give yourself this attention, this um, that you are actually pouring into this connection, this very positive um, alignment, aligning energy that part of what has not been aligned at all is this sort of disassociation from your own physical body. And it could be that you're dealing with body issues, issues of beauty, issues of weight, issues of health, issues of strength, um, appearance, all kinds of, and there's just like this, all kinds of like mental blockages, um, unhealthy mental patterns that have been repeating themselves over and over again, potentially throughout lifetime, but also uh, even just more recently. I feel like some of these, so they're coming up in these little microcosmic situations in your life. And so you're going to know what they are because they're the things that are making you miserable right now. And it might not actually be the thing, like say it's a, you know, you've got a lot of anxiety surrounding a relationship or a person. It might not actually be the person that needs the, the work right now. It's probably the way that you're perceiving the situation that's making you feel this way about the person. And that doesn't make a judgment on the person, whether they're good or bad, right or wrong for you, whatever, you know, it might be if we're talking about relationships or, or even if they're, you know, affecting you positively or negatively, it all comes back to your thought patterns. And, um, and that when, if you are, again, a divine compliment, really for anyone, because everything that we do internally affects our external world, right? But especially in that situation, when you're pouring in this kind of energy of alignment with the divine is what I'm hearing it as, uh, you're aligning yourself with the polar opposite, okay? Um, this may be something like an alignment that has really been on your mind and maybe causing a lot of mental stress. Once you can release that mental stress, then you are really coming into alignment. As long as you're holding tightly to that mental stress, and this is really for anything, anything in your life, whether it's job, relationship, family, creative, you know, those are the usual ones I bring up. Uh, you are not in alignment when you are here. The more you force, you try to force that alignment, you are not here. Once you bring in this energy of unconditional love is kind of how it's coming up and you direct it into the self and right now being asked to direct it to the physical body, right? So if you're struggling with issues of like not feeling good enough on a physical level, you're going to have to accept yourself on the physical level this transforms your relationships, your job, your, you know, the situations that you are in, whatever that is, okay? And that's, that is further confirmed by the next card. So we've got the Princess of Hearts here, which is the Page of Cups with the star. 
And we've got the two of swords in reverse, and I don't usually do reversals, but this one came out this way, and it feels important. It feels like it belongs that way. And I'm saying that because, like, I want to say that allowing this energy to come in and, like, really radiate through your physical body, your physical cells to create healing on the physical plane, you know, I feel that it, it then radiates through the mental plane, through the emotional plane. It sends a signal to your higher self. It sends a signal to, yeah, your higher self, the, the self that's driving the car, right? This, this is what's driving your car, your physical vehicle, is your higher self, the higher aspect of you, right? Um, some people are... Some people are interacting with this aspect of themselves and feeling that it's like a spirit guide or even God. And it's it's you. It's you on your highest plane, right? I'm not saying that there is not God or that there are not spirit guides. There are all those things. But part of that is this higher aspect of yourself. Um, and it, radi it sends the message, right, of love to that higher self, which is the part of you which is creating the, um, the alignment which precipitates the synchronicity, the perfection in everything that begins to align in your physical world. Okay, so the chance meetings, the sudden promotions, the windfall of resources, those are being aligned by your higher self and also by the divine and all of those things. But it needs to have the signal sent, right, of this unconditionally loving energy that aligns you with the highest vibration, which allows the instant manifestation of these things without effort, okay? And that's the key, it's so crazy because it really is without effort. It's as simple as aligning to who you really are in unconditional love, because that's who we all really are at the end of the day, okay? Um, any of these conflicts, this is, like this came out separately from all this other shit because this is what we are not. That's what's blocking you. And so when your mind becomes involved and it becomes like a circling, spinning vortex, that's sucking you into, it's sucking your energy into sending the wrong messages to this higher self, okay? The star is also about healing. And so I do think it sends this message of profound healing that ripples all the way through the physical body all about the physical body and this is all about getting unstuck so i can guarantee you that all of you watching this right now have been in an area in your in your life where you felt like something is not flowing this could be the relationship this is probably if you are a divine compliment is probably some aspect of that this could be a health issue for a lot of you right now it's going to be a health issue or an issue of getting something involving your physical body in alignment whether it's like Getting, I think for a lot of you, it's like moving into healthier habits, more rest period, better rest period, better food, uh, food that makes your body feel good. Not necessarily, you know, I mean, we want it to taste good too, but, but that makes your body feel good and moving away from the things that leave you sleepy and feeling like shit afterwards. Um, some of you changing up your hygiene habits. Some of you actually get, I did this this week. I'm going to two doctors within three days. <laughs> like just, it just happened that way. But it's me getting my physical health in order and in line because it's time, you know? And that's really what it comes down to. You probably didn't plan any of this or maybe you've known it for a while, but, but it's all just kind of falling together right now because it is time. It all falls together perfectly and allows for the alignment in all these different areas of your life. And the key here is still that unconditional loving energy and surrendering to the, to the higher self, to the divine, um, to the divine will even. And that, you know, in, if you want to think of it in even more precise terms, this is aligning your conscious existence, your conscious mind with the, the higher self, with the divine will all of those things in perfect alignment. And you go, you're only gonna get there, I don't wanna say only, I hate to say that, but really you're gonna get there through this kind of unconditionally loving energy. 
And that comes through. And it kind of all happens at once, right? Because as you align with the divine, you open up to that unconditionally loving energy. And then you align with that energy, which allows you to further align with source, with the divine. Okay. All right. That was an important but long message. Uh, it, it creates an alignment also with your divine complement or whatever whatever's going on there. And that does not mean that you should obsessively, excuse me, obsessively want to know what's going on with them. That's part of this energy. The fact that this is happening is kind of none of your business. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just kind of have to allow that to happen as well and stop worrying about it. Stop thinking about it. Run your own plate is what my parents used to say when we were all worried about what everybody else was eating or doing or whatever. Run your own plate. Um, we're in a set, we're in a place right now, uh, with the princess of pentacles. There is, there are new, I mean, I'm hearing new habits being learned. It's like a new, uh, neuro pathway being formed in your mind. And this does have to do with this unconditional love energy, because you're going to start bringing that into your daily life on a permanent basis. Now, this is to sort of the gateway for those energies to be able to come in and really access your physical your physical existence. Um, so we're students of how this gets used. So it could be that you have it, I think some, you know, you might have a few like stumbling blocks in the beginning where you like maybe try a diet or something like that because you want to get healthy, but then you realize that you are actually denying yourself in some sense. You weren't acting aligned with your truth because maybe you were maybe this this new diet or whatever you were trying to do was um uh kind of denying your access to say let, let's say carbohydrates right and i found that anything that you do in extremes is somehow denying your truth unless it feels right for you you know what i mean i'm not gonna say that maybe somebody it's not right for somebody um, but it's got to align with what feels right for you. Six of Cups energy, Six of Hearts energy coming up here. Um, what aligns with your true essence, your true, um, your true soul, your your joy, your happiness? What makes you feel good? When do you feel good? If you feel amazing because you cut out a certain food, then it might be good for you. If you feel amazing because you introduced meditation for ten minutes a day then that might be good for you. If it makes you feel anxious and nervous and upset with yourself, if you miss your 10 minutes, then you're gonna need to redirect your path a little bit because you've kind of gone off center. You don't want to introduce more habits or change habits. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is, now he's screwing with the printer. I don't even know. Um, that are going to reintroduce this energy into your life. And I think that that is kind of, the challenge here with this new moon this is a new new habits new things that we're bringing into our lives this is hitting me hard it's literally happening right upon my ascendant point directly on that degree the six degrees of virgo is my ascendant and um so a lot of you are probably i mean everyone's going to feel it but especially if you have um heavy placements in virgo or God forbid, have that specific placement. Um, a lot is going to be changing right now and allow yourself the latitude to make mistakes because when we then torment ourselves for fucking it up, then we go back into this energy and it slows us down, right? It, it blocks us up. Um, and this is all about opening ourselves up. This is all about clearing those mental patterns, which have become physical patterns, because what you're creating in your mental world is going to impact you on the physical level eventually. And I can tell you that for absolute fact, as an energy healer, I find that whatever mental or spiritual patterning is happening with that person is going to impact either an organ or an energy center or a part of the body that somehow connects with that situation, right? Anger to the liver, to the gallbladder, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, whatever, you get what I'm saying. Uh, 
so those are the patterns we're breaking here and starting new cycles and they absolutely must be in the vibration of the six of cups is how it's coming up right now which makes me feel like it goes to your core it goes to your inner truth it goes to your most innocent childlike joy and that doesn't mean you need to be feeling that innocent childlike joy right now but when you it cannot be the self-judgment this is the you before the self-judgment it cannot be that in that self-judgment. And this is what I tell my clients too when they're trying to like start new, a lot of times it's people trying to start new diets, right? Because they wanna lose weight, they wanna feel better about themselves. But if the path to feeling better about yourself is by hating yourself, it's not gonna work, you guys. Um, and I can tell you that too because I have been there. Virgo rising has been there. <laughs> okay, let's get a little more information because we're about 20 minutes in now. Yeah, your truth cannot shut you out. Like you cannot shut your out in the shut yourself out in the process of gaining your truth. The truth comes through and it brings you in out of the cold. So this is reaching a level of truth that is manifesting in our physical world, but it is a new way of reaching it because we have been taught by virtue of religion or society or whatever, that denying the self is the way. That victory is obtained through denying the self. And there are aspects in which that is true, right? But that is not the truth we're learning right now. I just want to bring this up. They're talking to me about this right now because this is, a, an, again, a personal lesson of mine, but I find more often than not that when it comes up in readings or healings that either that other person or that group of people need to hear this. That our truths, there is a higher truth, right? I always talk about this. There's a higher truth and there are personal truths. And there are also templates and archetypes that are valid and yet might not work in a given situation. There is a valid archetype of the ascetic, the person who withdraws from society. It's like the hermit, right? You go within to find. But right now, this is not about that. I mean, Virgo likes to do that. But this is nurturing the aesthetic, or the ascetic, not aesthetic, but ascetic, nurturing the hermit. This is a pro about providing appropriate support for that inward journey and not making that journey alone or by virtue of deprivation. Does that make sense? There may be times when pulling away from different resources, you know, deciding to tighten up the belt on the spending, deciding to remove refined sugar from the diet, deciding to, there are some people who will restrict their sleep habits because that gives them some kind of uh, clarity of mind. You know, you have to make sure you get enough sleep, but like not oversleep. So anyway, long story short, this is not that time. This is the time to do whatever resonates with the you before the self-judgment, okay? And this is that time if that's what resonates with you before the self-judgment, right? So many times though, the the, this energy of deprivation, poverty consciousness, comes from a desire to punish the self. And our habits can come from the desire to punish the self. I run every day, not me personally, but I'm just, as an example, I run every day at 6 p.m. at least three miles. Are you doing it because it benefits you, you feel good, and it's in it's part of your truth, or are you doing it because you're punishing yourself for eating, for not looking the way you think you should, for getting older, for being single? Do you know what I mean? I've seen all of this come up, so that's why I'm saying these things. 
there's a bigger truth coming in for us. And I think what it's going to do is it's going to link the truth that, okay, they're showing me the truth of the physical body. And so that is a greater awareness of how, I kind of just said this, of how the spiritual and mental bodies, energetic bodies, right, impact the physical body and what truth is told through the physical body. Do you feel that sick pang in your gut when you're around a certain person? Is it because they're toxic? Or is it because your fear of them is toxic? Or your fear of maybe maybe they're very good for you and, and you fear the relationship, you know? Is that the toxic pattern, the thought pattern surrounding it? So you've got you've got to allow, and I don't want to say you've got to get down to the root because you don't have to do this. I still feel that this is an energy that's pouring in that we simply need to allow, all right? And that started with this new cycle. I've come to understand it's probably in relation to the galactic new year, which began roughly a month ago. Um, but in any case, it's simply a new cycle where we are committing ourselves to our own divine feminine selves. Every person, man or woman, okay? What kind of growth, Source, what kind of growth can we expect out of this new moon period? What kind of growth can we expect out of this new moon period? First thing that's coming up here is the Three of Swords with the world. This is an end to, um, I want to say because it's swords, that it's primarily a mental pattern that has really been blocking us from joy and happiness and fulfillment. That these are the wounds that we've been carrying around and like really, I feel like in a lot of cases we've not been aware of them. It's like when you have like a paper cut and you don't realize it until you stick your hand in like, I don't know, dishwater, <laughs> something, whatever. It, it's not immediately visible, but this is going to make it visible. And it's going to give you the energy, the supportive energy to end that cycle, all right? And so I think if we start now by setting the intention with this new moon that these cycles are able, that we are allowing these cycles to close, that we are not going to fight them from closing, that we are simply choosing a new reality to see things in a new light, to see things um, in the light that source sees them or our higher selves see them. See them in the light of unconditional love. See them in the light of our core truth in the light of the highest and best good will take place regardless of your actions. Hopefully your actions are not delaying the highest and best good. You know what I mean? And this is not to say there are not times for action. Uh, but at this time, I am still feeling that there is so much energy built behind us needing to allow, okay? So this is allowing a cycle of, of literal heartbreak or self-judgment or difficult wounding that we have not yet had the opportunity to let go of. Maybe we did have the opportunity and we chose not to. But now it's time to set that intention. With this new moon, I choose to let go of my patterning, which is causing creative, cr creative, could be causing creative wounding, but continuing wounding, okay? That's what happens if we allow this. What else, please, Source, what else?
we've got the King of Pentacles that came up just a second ago. I'm just looking for kind of a clarifier. King of Pentacles makes total sense with the chariot. You're pushing your life forward so quickly with this allowance. All right. Um, there's a. You're letting in divine light. Through the, through the solar flares, through the solar rays, through the, I mean, with the sun coming up here, it all feels sun-oriented, the sun in Virgo. Through all of that solar energy, you're allowing a deep and unconditional healing on the physical level, into your physical body. This profoundly grounds you. Um, it allows your manifestations to take place. That is the king of pentacles. He is able to manifest in the physical world um, without even trying. It's kind of like it simply grows. It simply gestates. It simply provides. There is a deep connection to the earth with this. And so I'm feeling this sense of the need to ground ourselves on a daily basis in order to assist this energy and really taking hold within our physical bodies and that's the key for this this new moon i even want to say for this month okay um allowing this energy to take root in our physical bodies enabling it movement right what is physicality but the intersection of like mass and time which equals which is movement, right? Movement takes place in the physical world because of the intersection of those things. And I think that we are more deeply grounding. There's something coming up about time now. Uh, I have definitely felt that time is very efficient right now, if that makes any sense. Um, I get a lot of things done in a short amount of time. Time passes quickly. So that may be happening for you now, and it is a part of this alignment that's taking place between, I'm even hearing like the central sun, the divine, the higher self, the central sun, the core self, the physical self, all of those things in no particular order. <laughs> Uh, I want to say it's like an upgrade. Okay. So set those intentions. And the most important intention here is the allowance of the healing. Not the forcing of the healing, the allowance of the healing. Okay. And healing, I just was just discussing with one of my spiritual teachers the other day. It's such a shitty word because it implies that there's something wrong with you. There is not a fucking thing wrong with you. You're perfect. Every one of us is perfect. Every situation is perfect. And it is just a movement through different experiences that are that is taking place. Um, an evolution that is taking place within each one of us. And these energies, every one after another, every two weeks, a new cycle is allowing that evolution. Okay? So... Step into this next stage of allowance of the evolution. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to end it there because we're at 30 minutes. Um, I will be jumping into the individual Zodiac readings also um, starting a little later today. Second half of the Zodiac coming right up, and I will see you then. Bye, guys.